hey guys, so you've got some machine learning or deep learning demo and you're ready to deploy it somewhere. That's awesome. This is the video for you. Um, and we're gonna go through everything from the UI to getting it deployed and ready and available for you to use and share with your friends, with your colleagues, whoever you wanna share it with um, and however you wanna use it. So for the UI, we'll, we'll just jump, forget the UI, sorry. We'll just jump straight into it. I'll be referring to this um, Medium article on my page. I'll link it in the description below so you can follow along with me. Otherwise, just you can follow along in this video by yourself too. That works. Um, jumping straight into it, some of the things you're gonna need are Oh, also, this is a, what I'm referring to. You may notice it'll be a little bit different. Um, this is just a draft right now. By the time this video is up, it should be available for everyone. Some of the things you're going to need to get started are just to have Docker installed on your system, a uh, G Cloud CLI installed on your system, a Google Cloud billing account enabled, and your own Python machine learning, deep learning model um, that you want to get deployed. If you need help with any of these things, whether that's installing Docker, the G Cloud CLI, setting up your Google Cloud billing account, um, there's a ton of videos and support for that online. Feel free to just check those out yourself just for the sake of time and just efficiency. I'm not, I'm not gonna dive into them in this particular video. Let me know in the comments though if you want me to cover some of those things and how I do them. Um, otherwise, there's a ton of resources out there for you to figure out how to do that stuff too. Um, once you've got those things set up, we and an outline of, of how this process goes is first we'll develop your UI using Streamlit because it's one of it, it's it's a really awesome UI framework that doesn't require any knowledge of JavaScript or or HTML or CSS really it, it just integrates directly into your Python code and you can get started in literally a matter of minutes it's it's really quick really efficient um, and the documentation available is is awesome they have a lot of support as well. So if you're confused and you're looking for some, some answers, there's, there's an awesome community around Streamlit. Um, here's an example of my UI right here. This is literally like, it, it's kind of crazy to think that I can flesh out a whole UI, including a login screen and my home page in under 50, 50 lines of code. Um, and a lot of this is really actually just boilerplate. It's a template, uh, a couple templates that I can just squeeze together. Um, if you want to find some templates or find documentation on how to build your app, I've linked all of that in the blog. You can check it out here. Um, here's Streamlit's own homepage. Um, here's do the documentation, Streamlit's documentation. Um, so yeah, please check that out. If you want an alternative to Streamlit, say it doesn't work for your particular use case, you can check out Gradio. It's another great alternative. Um, and please don't feel daunted or feel scared that, oh my gosh, here's another framework I need to learn to get my web app up and running. I promise you it's, it's, it's extremely, extremely simple. Um, it'll take you a, maybe like an hour max to, to, to build out a very simple one. Um, but yeah, so let's, let's dive into these steps. So now that we've kind of talked about the UI, which is Streamlit, of course, let's go into step number two and kind of unpack what that that what happens there a little bit. So we're gonna need to containerize our app. Um, and we're gonna do this in two steps. First, we're gonna containerize it locally using Docker. And for, for those, I'm, I'm no Docker expert, but I'll, I'll explain the, the little understanding that I have on it. Um, basically, from what I understand, Docker abstracts your app to its own. It's kind of like a virtual environment, as you can say, for your app in particular that works inside of itself, it's self-contained to the point where once you know it works in that container, you can move that container around. It's very transportable. So you can move it if you wanna have it on AWS or if you wanna have it on Google Cloud because you know it works in this container and it has all the dependencies it needs in this container, it can go and work anywhere else that supports these Docker containers. And because Docker is widely used, it's, it's a very high likelihood that it will be supported. Um, and so, for this particular case, we're gonna do it in two steps. We're gonna build a local Docker container, test it locally, make sure it works inside this container. And then we're gonna actually use Google Cloud's, um, the G Cloud CLI and Google Cloud Build, which I will reference here, Google Cloud Build. And right now it's not in the blog, but I think I should add it because it's a key step. But um, we're gonna use Google Cloud Build to help build our final container 
which and it'll automatically build this image and deploy it directly to um, a Google Cloud Google Cloud Container Registry, which is a registry that helps you keep track of any and all containers that you push to there, um, and you can figure out how to use them however you want inside of the Google Cloud Console itself. So the commands for this are here. So Docker, um, sorry, Streamlit has extensive documentation on how to deploy with Docker right here. And you can check this out. Um, but they, they walk you through deploying a very simple web app um, using Docker. We're going to make a few adjustments for this use case. I would highly recommend checking this out if, if this is your first time doing it. Um, it'll just help you become more familiar with the process and, and make little changes of your own for your use case. Here's the Docker file that I wrote for mine. Um, and this is kind of like, it's, it's basically just a, a, a copy of this with some minor changes. Um, and those minor changes are, I'll explain them now, is first I've exposed port 8080 both here um, in the expose here and in this entry point. Because what Google Cloud Run does by default is it runs on port 8080. So you're gonna wanna specify this just so you don't run into any startup issues in the beginning. Um, although you can change um, Google Cloud Run's default port later on, but just to save you time, let's just specify it from the start so you can use your app as soon as possible. And once you've specified your Docker file, um, we're gonna build that image locally using this command right here, docker build t, and an image name can be whatever you want it to be. Um, it's not, it, it, doesn't, it's, it doesn't really matter. And excuse me, there should be a space here. And don't forget this period, just hit enter and it'll build that container for you. Um, then you're gonna run it and we're gonna test to make sure that it works inside that container locally. Um, using this, we're gonna specify the port 8080. We're gonna map port 8080 on our machine to port 8080 in this Docker container. Um, and we'll run it, we'll specify the name of the container which you just created. Um, this is a really important step. Make sure it works here locally before you move on anywhere else. Otherwise, if it doesn't work in this container, it's not gonna work on Google Cloud Run, it's not gonna work on AWS. So just make sure that you've got everything working. In my case, um, there were a few errors, issues, not particularly errors, but runtime issues that I came into um, with my app when I tried containerizing it and I, I was stubborn and tried deploying it without fixing them, thinking it would just magically work, but it won't. Uh, just spend, spend a little bit of time making sure it, it works in, in your local Docker container before moving on to the next step. Sweet, and the next step is the final Docker build, final build of your container and pushing it to um, the Google Cloud Container Registry which I will link here in the blog as well. This is the container registry. So we're gonna use this command, which is, it uses the Google Cloud CLI, which you've installed. And what this does is it tags and builds your Docker container and automatically pushes it to the Google Cloud container registry, which you can then link or, or reference from Google Cloud Run. You can reference that specific container and then so say like Google Cloud runs here. Actually, I'll show you, I'll show you an example in my case. Uh, but yeah, you can reference that container which you pushed to the, to the registry inside Cloud Run, link it, and then deploy it from Cloud Run um, using this command. So this project ID, what this is, is I'll go to my services right here. You'll create your Google Cloud billing account and um, wherever you are, if you're in Cloud Run or if you're in, you can even be in the compute engine area, you're always gonna have this header bar. You can just click this and whatever your project name is, here's the ID. And you're gonna copy that and you're gonna come on over and swap it for this value right here. And some project name, once again, this can be anything you like. In my case, I named it like app.container or something like that or app-container. Um, and then this is an important one. I Maybe I mentioned, I forgot, I'm like kind of spacing out a little bit, but. I'm not building this particular project with you guys because in my case, it's a pretty large build. There's a five gigabyte checkpoint file um, for my project, which takes a long time to deploy, um, which is why I'm just walking you guys through what I've done. Um, but because my project was so big, I kept running into timeout errors. 
So it's really important if your project is larger to specify a timeout, otherwise it'll just, it'll just keep on failing. So I was kind of just stubborn and put a two hour timeout so that I didn't have to worry about it timing out. Now, once you run this command, it'll, it'll do everything automatically and the final result should be something like this. So you can come here, I'm just gonna search for the container registry. And here it is, I guess it's under the CI CD section. I'm just gonna click container registry. And the final result should be something like this. In, in my case, it's called captionate container. And this name will coincide with whatever you choose to name it here, your sum project name. Um, and that'll be the final result. You can, once, once, the, once this command finishes running, just hop on over to your container registry and verify that your container is there. Um, and once you've done that, we can move on to the last and final step, which is getting your app deployed. This is what we want, this is where we wanna be. Um, congratulations if you made it to this point. Let's push on forward and get your app out there. So now we're gonna navigate over to Google Cloud Run. Um, I have mine pinned over here, otherwise you can just search for it. And here you see my app, Streamlit. I named it Streamlit. Um, you can name it whatever you want. Um, you're not gonna see anything here to start off with. You're gonna actually have to create it. Um, so let me just expand this a little bit. Um, you're gonna have to create, click this button, create service. And then inside here, your container image URL, don't worry, you don't have to memorize anything or find some URL. You can actually just select. And here, it'll link that container registry like I talked about. You should see something like this, which is a reference to that container registry that I, talk, that I showed you guys before. Here's my container registry. And here are a few images. Um, in my container registry. In your case, I don't know how many you'll see. I think you should just see one because I, I did this process quite a few times. I created a few images, but you should just see one. So you can select that and then hit select. And that'll be your, your containerized app. You can give it a name. Um, here, this, this, uh, this particular section, if it, uh, it helps you save money by allocating the CPU only or, or the resources, CPU, RAM, whatever only when the app is called. So that way when there's downtime, no one's on your app, you're not wasting money um, with, with uptime. Um, you're gonna wanna check allow unauthenticated invocations. What this does is it, it allows just anyone to access your URL, say you share it, just like a, a normal website. Um, if you don't want that, you can of course click this, require authentication. Um, and then another thing you can go down here if you might you may need more resources so here is a section where you can specify the port like i said 8080 is specified by um, by default um, one important area is because once again my app was larger i was using an open source ai transformer um, i wanted more cpu resources so you can actually specify up to eight cores um, or eight v8 v cpus um, whatever that means and how up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. Um, this timeout, what this is, is after 300 seconds, we can check how much that is, 300 divided by 60. So after about five minutes, um, based on this 300, um, your app is gonna timeout and you, you'll have to hit the refresh button for it to start up again. You can specify this up to 3600, which is I think 30 minutes. Um, to, for a 30 minute timeout. So yeah, you can, you can mess around with these, these settings up to your preference. Um, and then eventually when you're done, you can hit the create button. And when you hit that create button, it should take a little bit to build that container and deploy it, and, but it should do it all automatically. You won't have to do anything else. And eventually you'll see this green check mark. You'll have your own um, service created and then here will be your service details and you'll be provided a URL right here. This is a public URL that'll allow you to access your personal app. So we can click that, which is mine. Um, and once again, it's just starting up, so it'll take a, take a little bit. Um, and here's my Streamlit app starting up. Um, but yeah, you should have access to revisions. The really cool thing about Cloud Run is if you make any changes, you can redeploy your app once again, just using that um, command that I showed you over here, uh, this command, you can send it back up, create a new container, and then um, it, you, can, you can link it as a new revision or something, and you can always redeploy, and you'll have your updated web app. 
The thing is though, that's, that's inefficient because say in my case, it took me like, I don't know, like 30 minutes each time to, to get it up and deployed. That's inefficient. You can actually set up this thing, edit continuous deployment right here. And what this does is it allows you to hook up your GitHub repository to Google Cloud Run. And then you can push like right here. This is my code, which is linked to GitHub. Any changes I make here, I can push to GitHub. And then the Google Cloud Run service will automatically pull those changes from GitHub. And then um, it'll, it'll show those changes on your web app. I can make a separate video on this. I've, I've got it set up for me. I can set up, I'll probably make a separate video on this later. Let me know if, if that's something you want urgently. Um, and I can, I can do that video sooner. Um, but that's something I plan to make. It's a very uh, extremely efficient way of, of, um, of making changes to your app. Yeah, that's basically the principle. You can look into it yourself, of course. Um, but yeah, and uh, it's still running. Um, like I said, my app's a little larger, uh, so it takes a little bit, but yeah, I'll just exit out of here. You'll have your own public URL to view your app. But uh, that should be about it, honestly, for this process. I, I hope it's this straightforward for you. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Um, I'll do my best to help you. I, I wanna make sure that you guys get to this point as well. So please, yeah, let, let me know if there's anything you need. Um, let's, uh, we'll, we'll do what we can.